Tyron Woodley beat the dog snot out of Darren Till over the weekend. All the dog the- shit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the dog. Hey, the dog shit. As Snoop Dogg would say. Yeah, I saw the Snoop Dogg video, man. Look, you were the the betting underdog going into this fight. There were a lot of people who doubted you. You went in there. Uh, you had a lot of critics, and you violently shut him down. I mean, what were you thinking when you were in the octagon, and how do you feel about it now that you've had some time to digest it? You know, to be honest, um, my first fight in 2005, I was a little nervous. I didn't know what to expect. And I know a lot of fighters say this, but I haven't really been nervous for a fight since then, since my first fight. I always have so much stuff leading up to the fight that I'm not even allowed to get nervous yet. This fight, I was a little bit nervous, not so much for the opponent or the style or the fight or what he could do. It was just so much riding on this fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. All the critics wanted me to lose. You know what I mean? A, a lot of the, the machine was behind this young fighter. Uh, for the first time in my career, they tried to deem me as a, the AR, AARP recipient. All right. They tried to put me on the old man senior citizen list, which I thought was kind of funny. And then, you know, I, I, I got this single, I Beat Your Ass, coming out this week. Yeah. And it's kind of tough to have a single talking about beating some ass if you go out there and get your ass beat, so. <laughs> Um, just that, you know, just, I, I started thinking about my legacy and, you know, my family and just the lifestyle I've been able to provide for them. And really the platform that I have because I'm the champion, we all know, let's be real. If I wasn't the champion, some of these opportunities and, and, and ability to reach people in the masses wouldn't be possible. So, you know, I'm like, damn, I got to win this fight. I mean, I always think that, but yeah. I'm like, I really got to win tonight. So, um, I just told my family to say some extra prayers for me. Knock the ice off. Know that God was in there with me. Know that he's going to get the glory. Take a deep breath. Say, hey, man, you just got to be willing. The battle ain't even yours. Just be willing to go out there and let it go. And um, from the time when I first um, did my warm-up, I knew it was on. I could feel yeah. how loose I was, how relaxed I was. I was so sharp. And I just stopped warming up. I said, I'm good. I'm good. I don't <laughs> want to do much. Save it for out there. Five title defenses in a row. Uh, are you now the greatest welterweight champion of all time? I am the greatest welterweight champion of, of all time. No disrespect to George St. Pierre, but I don't have to fight him to prove that. I'm fighting right now when the sport is at its peak, when the sport is the hottest, when the athletes are the most supreme, you know, whether it's genetically using PEDs or it's just because they've watched it for the last 25 years and they started wrestling and grappling and striking at the same time. In that era, it was a striker, the grappler, and then he made it, you know, George St. Pierre is what I'm talking about, he made it to the era where the wrestlers like Johnny Hendricks and Koshek start to be able to throw punches. Now you got a guy like me who just got his black belt jiu-jitsu, all-American wrestler, and I've outstruck all the best strikers in the entire UFC, and I trained with one of the best boxing coaches in the game, Eric Brown for Wildcard, so you would almost say I'm a black belt in three different arts. So that, I'm the type of fighter. Then I'm like a Mack trucker. Then I'm you know, very cerebral, and I have a good fight IQ, and I take the sport very seriously, and and everybody try to play me out to be um, Hollywood. You know, you doing your TMZ show? Well, yeah, I got a lot of love. It's like you doing TMZ? I see you doing a tablet. You doing TMZ? You doing movies? You doing music? Are you really focused? This kid, you know, ain't seen his kids and don't care about his pregnant girlfriend. So they painted him out to be the the extremely focused young hungry fighter, and me to be the 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 the, the fighter going Hollywood, but. That's why I say, hey, he's never had that pressure before. He's never had those expectations before. He's getting all the media. He's getting all swooped up into it. What was I? Zip those lips, quiet. And I went out there and did work. Yeah. Um. A lot of people are saying they want to see you fight GSP now. What do you say? I mean, I've been wanting to fight GSP, but but it's something that I don't have to have that to cement my legacy. Right. Uh, I wanted it really bad. A lot of people thought I wanted it just because it was a money fight. I mean, look at the pay-per-view numbers with him and Bisming fall. Bisming's a big shit talker. Right. Wasn't that one that great? You know, it's not like you know the numbers went through the roof. So, I thought uh, I needed that fight to cement my legacy as the greatest. Uh, I am the greatest welterweight of all time. But if he wants to fight me, I'm all I'm 100 percent with it. You know, there's no there's no way I would say no to that. What about the winner of uh, Dustin Poirier and Nate Diaz? Um, if it's Dustin Poirier, probably not just because he's a lightweight. Um, he does, he's never fought at welterweight. Nate's at least a lightweight that's fought at um, welterweight before. And, um, you know, to be honest, you know, I, I wanted to fight Nate for similar reasons, you know, for legacy reasons, because he had a lot of juice from um, Conor McGregor. And, you know, he was a guy 
guy that was dwindling around. And I'm like, man, I want to become the greatest. And then for me, it's all a ploy to be the greatest. That's it. That's, yeah. It's very simple. I'm going to make money no matter what I do because my mind is just created that way. Yeah. Uh, but when he was that guy at that time, I want to knock off the guy. Yeah. And, you know, that didn't happen. So I'm not going to just keep calling guys out. You know, nobody likes when I do that anyway. We see that. The fans hate it. They fucking give me the, the biggest shit ever when I start saying who I want to fight. So I'm just going to say I'm the greatest ever. Whoever wants smoke, they know where I'm at. I love it. <laughs> I love it also because, I don't know if you remember this, but before the fight, we talked to you on camera and we said, tell the gamblers out there, the degenerates, what round this fight's going to end. And I don't know if you remember this, but you called the round. You said it's going to be the second round. second round. Yeah, I felt that. I felt I felt it was going to take a round to fill him off. I felt like he was going to be overly aggressive with the, um, with the takedown defense early. Um, I was going to utilize my wrestling threat to punch him in the body. I mean, I know cutting all that weight, you know, it's going to hurt him. So I was going to, I mean, you saw I punched him a couple of hard times in the body, really got his attention, need him hard to the body. I went high, I went low, I shot, I punched, and he really didn't know what to um, do. So when I saw him coming in, I punched with him. So yeah. that is that long. You don't want to let him, you know, punch and you keep backing up. He's going to keep you on the end of his punch. Did he connect so, with you? I don't think so. I think the stats show one, but I didn't feel one. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, his head connected with my elbow a lot. So yeah. that sure. God damn. Your elbow? I'm like, dog, oh, what's your head made out of? <laughs> damn hand fucking hurt. Elbow hurt. Your mom, you and your mom talked to him after the fight. Um, I mean, I know that you you were angry going into the fight. Afterward, you guys, mutual respect. You guys cool? Yeah, yeah we, man, we... We never really had smoke, but I expected him to be confident. You can't be in this sport and not be confident. You better be confident. If you're not in mixed martial arts to be a world champion, in my opinion, you're a fucking idiot. Because this sport is too hard. It beats up your body. The politics are too brutal, and it's 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 a lot of um, it's a lot of fame that we see on social media. And but in real, it's not that much. It's not that much fame. It's not that much money until you get to the top of the top. And it takes a while for many people to get there. So I never really had smoke with Darren Till. He's a young fighter. He's supposed to be cocky. He's supposed to be confident. The machine was behind him. Everybody was juicing him up and making him feel. And to be honest, that week I kind of felt bad for him. Yeah. Because I said, this motherfucker don't know he's about to lose. <laughs> he's undefeated. And I remember being that way. Nobody could, you couldn't have paid me. Everybody losing for I'm like, fuck that. I ain't losing. I was undefeated. And I fought for my first world title. I got knocked the fuck out against Neymar Court. So I know what he was going to feel like. I knew it, knew what emotion he's going to go through. He's going to be depressed for a couple of weeks because in his mind, he really thought he was going to get it done. He's like, you know, I remember I had a, a shelf in my gym ready to put the belt on. You know what I mean? I was all, I'm going to get all these new members. All the kids are going to be excited. I'm going to come home and St. Louis is going to be a great parade. And I came back and I walked in my gym and, you know, I just broke down. You know, I broke down. I'm like, damn, man, I fucking do get on my belt. It looked so weird like he was wearing my belt. And that was my visual all week. Imagine this motherfucker, this corny motherfucker wearing a belt. That shit just haunted me. And I was like, you know what? No, not today. Let me ask you a question that a lot of people are going to ask you, I feel like, uh, in the next couple of weeks. In my opinion, you're one of the biggest names in the sport. You are uh, the greatest welterweight of all time. In my mind, uh, there's no, 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 no comparison. Even GSP, with all due respect. The biggest name in mixed martial arts is clearly Conor McGregor. You guys have had issues uh, in the past. You guys had that uh, moment backstage. He wins this fight against um, Khabib. I feel like you might be one of the big names that they could seriously consider a fight. I mean, who else would Conor even consider at this point? Who's bigger than you? Yeah, you know, I don't think I think I don't think it's another name right now. Um, you know, I just I want to see him get through Khabib. You get through Khabib and. Um, you know, he's he's got a, a featherweight world title, a lightweight world title. Uh, one time he joked around, like, well, maybe it's an omen because he had my belt, you know, at the, in New York. And maybe maybe it's time for him to try to attempt, you know, history and go for a third. Um, that, that would be that would be ridiculous to fight Conor McGregor you know, and defend my strap against him. So I just, I just try not to get my hopes up high on too many right. things. At the end of the day, man, I, I'm just happy that I can prove the supporters right. I, I ain't got time to prove all the haters wrong. I mean, right. There's too many of them. But there's way more people that support me, and I can see those people, and I support those people. And those people are in the circle praying with me. 
you know, the the, the final episode of Champ Camp, the um, yeah, the finale. Some people are gonna cry. I guarantee you. So talking about the supporters, you had people like Wiz Khalifa, people like yeah. Snoop Dogg made that. Video. Everybody hit me up. Snoop Dogg hit me up. I, I Facetime Wiz yesterday. Uh, I Facetime Nelly yesterday. LL Cool J hit me up. Big Boy hit me up. Um, I mean, I can I can go down the list. Everybody hit me up. I, I think I'm I think I'm going to the studio with Nelly uh, today or tomorrow. How's it feel to have that kind of support, man? You know what? The funny thing is, I just told my sister this is, you always get support home last. Yeah. Nelly went out with nine times platinum, and then the people from St. Louis gave him love. Yeah. So when he hit me up yesterday, and we we um I was at the cigar bar chilling out, and he hit me up. We started talking about doing some music and hitting training and stuff. And he said, all right, well, let's link up tomorrow. I said, cool, bet. And it, it, it sunk into me that now now I've received it from my hometown. Yeah. And, you know, so it's probably time for me to start to get some security because I, I can't just walk around in public regular anymore. <laughs> um, a couple of guys tried to flex on me a couple of days ago. And, I mean, I knew they were drunk. So I was like, you know what? I need to start moving a little differently now. And uh, now it's time to get paid, man. You know, UFC know what they got to do with me. You know, I made this fight happen. I didn't say nothing. I went out there. I delivered. And um, I'm, I'm still the classy guy. But um, it's, it's time to pay the champ. Love it. Anything else you want to say? You know what? Hey, make sure you guys check out Beat Show Ads. It's going to hit all platforms this week. I'm fucking excited. So Friday is dropping. Um, I Beat Show Ads featuring um, T-Dub-O and Wiz Khalifa, man. Song is ham. I, I've kind of gave him some teasers. I know you guys got a couple teasers. Um, we just got it finally the final mix and master on it last week. Um, it's going up on a um, on the platform today, and we're gonna press douche release on Friday. So I'm pumped up. I've gotten great reviews from um, all the artists I sent it to. So yeah, um, music music is gonna start pumping our next. So every three to six months, I'm gonna have a new track popping up. All right, man. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. I know how hard you've worked over the last year, uh, especially coming off the surgery and with all the shit. To focus and do this, man. I'm so proud of you. You should be so proud of yourself. You're a fucking legend, man. Well, I appreciate you guys, man. You guys are family. And uh hey, I'll see y'all soon. Time for more. I need to be in the newsroom doing the Hollywood. Right, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I lost my boys yelling for you. I can barely talk. <laughs> <laughs>